What's going on, my dudes? This is Dustin Stelzer with another episode of Journey to Master. Um, today, I'm not really doing like episode, episode. I just haven't done an episode in a while. Um, so I wanted to say hi and kind of touch base with you guys. Um, I have a lot of shit going on right now that uh, is all part of the Electrician U Journey to Master thing. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of shit going on, so it's been taking my attention away from actually making content, but um, don't fear, I'm not going anywhere. Um, I've actually been kind of tossing the idea around of doing this full time. Um, enough opportunities and things have come my way to, to the point where I feel like I could just take this 100% seriously and just do this full time from here on out. Um, so I'm kind of batting that idea around. Um, I've spent a lot of time making a test prep book. So for the Electrician U watchers out there, um, there is a, a test prep book. So if you go to electricianu.com, electrician, letter U, uh, dot com, you can buy a test prep book. So if you're like testing for your license, um, it's 100 questions. There's an answer key in the back of it. It sells for $11.99, but on my site I'm doing 25% off for the rest of this month, so it's $8.99. Um, I think the math on that is right. I know it's $8.99. I don't know if that's exactly 25% off. Anyways, um, I'm sure somebody in the comments will let me know. <laughs> um, but I have a test prep book, so if you're trying to take your test, if you're studying for your test, like the best thing that you can do is take practice exams just over and over find new exams, finish one, take it again, try to keep getting faster and faster at it. Um, I don't recommend like circling your answers because then you can kind of see what your answers were the next time you take the test. So I usually take a separate piece of paper and I write all my answers down. Uh, that way you have a fresh copy of the test. But anyways, uh, the answer key in the back has all of the answers as well as it has each code section. So if you don't want to look at the answers, you can look at the answer sheet and just see what's highlighted in red. And that'll at least let you know where in the code book the answers are. So you could go find the answers without having to look at the, uh, the specific answers. So um, that's something I spent a lot of time on. It's called a residential electrician test prep book questionnaire thing. Um, it's not for residential only. It's just questions that are geared towards somebody that is doing residential work. So there's a lot of stuff about Romex and a lot of stuff about residential services and uh, arc fault, GFI, stuff like that. Um, there's not a lot in there for, uh, I guess what you would call like an unrestricted journeyman level where it's um, a lot of commercial stuff, uh, big load calculations, um, you know, master level stuff. There's none of that in there. So this is geared towards just people that need to go through the code book and find answers, but people that are in a residential segment, because a lot of these questions just are residential. Now you could be going for your master and this is still a good test for that because going into a testing center to take your test, you need to be able to quickly find answers throughout the code book, regardless of what the questions are. Um, I studied for my master exam for a year before I took it and I got in there and it was like everything I'd ever tester everything I'd ever studied was not on the test and it's like how is that possible I studied the whole damn book I did Mike Holtz all his books you know I bought Dewalt has a practice exam that's another one you should go get I think it's like 14 15 bucks from Barnes and Noble um, Dewalt makes uh, one for like different levels of testing so just rip through every single one of them just keep going the more that you can look at a question flip through the code book find the answer then go back, look at another question, flip through the code book, find the answer. It doesn't matter what the damn questions are necessarily. Um, it's just helping you understand where things are located at in the code book and how fast you can find them. So I really, really recommend it. It's 100 questions long. Again, go to electricianu.com and get yourself one. I'm actually doing like pre-orders right now too for the actual book if you'd rather just buy the soft cover book. A um, little bit more expensive, but some people don't like to sit and study off screen. Some people don't have a printer, so they can't print the digital copy out. Um, so, anyways, enough pitching my shit. I just wanted to say that um, that I've been working on that. So it's been a lot of editing and going through code and like finding stuff and typing it all up. Um, so 
that's what I've been doing lately. Um, I have been developing some stuff that I can't really talk about. I know that sucks to say and like leave y'all hanging. Um, but I have some things that are going to be coming up in the next year that are going to be far more substantial than anything that I've ever done. Um, my content is going to be uh, elevated at a very, very high level. Um, and I'm going to be doing things a little bit differently. So look forward to that uh, probably closer to the end of the year, maybe this time next year, um, seeing something that is like substantially different than anything that I've been doing, but at a far better scale. Um, what else has been going on? I don't know. I've been working, um, doing more sponsorship deals. Oh, yeah. So today's episode is brought to you by Synology. Uh, so those of you who don't know who Synology is, uh, Synology makes uh, NASes. So if any of you all have network area storages, um, it's basically a bank of hard drives. So like I have uh, a bunch of four terabyte hard drives, two terabyte hard drives. A little while ago I was doing a video um, that was like tech gurus help uh, and I reached out to the whole community and a whole bunch of people flooded my inbox and they're like, you got to check out either QNAP or Synology. They both make uh, network storage solutions that you know you can stick a whole shitload of hard drives in. I think I've got two four uh, terabyte hard drives in here, and then I have four two terabyte hard drives that are out in the living room. So that's eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. I think that's 16 terabytes. I don't even know if this will handle up to that much. Um, I'm gonna give you guys more updates. I'll probably be talking about these guys on like a monthly basis, once a month. I'm just gonna update you, because right now, I don't even know how to use this thing to its max capabilities. Like, there's a there's a whole app. So, what's really cool about this is it's networked. So I have this plugged into my Ethernet in the back, like right into my um, modem. So it's a network storage that's accessible from all of my other devices. I can access any files on here. I've got um, some little portable hard drives that also plug in. There's a bunch of USB ports and stuff that I can plug other hard drives in it. So it's even more than just the the uh, SATA drives that I have plugged in. Um, so it's expandable. But there's like all these apps on it. So I've got access to all my files over the internet. I just have this like little link that I have to type into a browser and it instantly like finds my shit and lets me have access to it. Um, but the crazy thing is there are all of these different apps. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but there's all these different apps that you can download to the thing. There's like a DNS server app, and there's a, f a hyper backup app, and an iTunes server. You can set up the mail station, uh, mail server on it. Um, I don't know, there's just all kinds of stuff. So, uh, VPN server, virtual machine, like there's so many things that you can do with this. So I really need to sit down with Synology and figure out like what's the best way I'm going to use this. Um, again, for those that don't know what the hell I'm talking about or why I'm talking about this, um, I had another one of these that was a five bay cheap Amazon third party made in China bullshit little uh, network area storage. Um, and the thing just kept crashing on me. So I would lose like seven terabytes worth of data every single time it would happen. It would take me three days to try to comb through it all, recover everything, offload it onto like several different little hard drives, like these tiny ones over here, and then reformat the whole thing and try to load all of my stuff back on. It took like like 14 hours a day for three straight days to do all of that. So I just got tired. Like the, the uh, after the second time that it happened, I made a video few episodes back on Journey to the Master, saying like, dudes, help me, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, so first thing I did is I went out and bought a MacBook Pro. Um, this thing is so incredibly killer, it's like, I went to the Apple store and I just went like max, 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 like maxed out everything that I could get on it and it's a dope machine. I've never been an Apple computer user, I have an iPhone, um, that's what you are in right now for me looking at you um, but so I've been an iPhone user for I don't know probably the last like five years or something like that uh, always been Android before that but I like the iPhone I like the platform of, of uh, Mac and OS X 
So I figured I would give this thing a try. Dude, it's so incredibly fast. Oh my god. And it's so clean and everything works really well. My productivity, what I'm able to get done in like any given amount of time is so damn fast. Even with a learning curve of having to figure out like command instead of control and all the different key things. And um, it's so, it's so fucking cool. So what I'm trying to do is figure out how I can... How are you gonna utilize the cloud for backup for everything? So, like, I don't want to fill this hard drive up on this computer too much. I'm gonna to try to keep like just essential stuff on it that I'm using on a pretty constant basis. All of it backs up to iCloud, and I pay for iCloud like I don't know five, six bucks a month or something like that to get like two more terabytes of cloud space. Um, but I would like this thing to be completely backed up. I would like one of these to be my portable. Um, filming you know when I go out somewhere and I'm doing something like just bring this thing with me all the time um, and then I would like another like probably solid state drive that's like four terabytes or something like that that I can have I could back all of this stuff up onto that and then keep it off-site somewhere so if I lose everything my house burns down whatever iCloud goes down and loses all of our shit uh, like at least I have an offsite storage that I can keep backing up to every once in a while. But this thing is like the beast in the east. Um, what I've been finding out about it is it's really well reviewed. So if you start, if you're looking for something like this that houses like a lot of stuff and you can have a media server and you can have access to all your files remotely, like if you're in New York and you need to get some files off of it, since it's networked through a website, all of your stuff is available online through you. You can set up a VPN so you can kind of tunnel your way through and and only you have access to the things that you have access to. Um, I think you can set a proxy up on it. You can set an email server up. There's just so many things that you can do. It's really badass. So this is the DS1618 Plus. Um, not the cheapest of their models, but Synology found out that I was having this problem and they're like, here, we'll send you this thing. Do a video every, every month for a few months and it's yours. Um, so I need to talk about them and talk about why I like it and what I what I like, what I don't like. Um, so far, the only thing that I haven't liked is just because I'm used to the way that I'm used to a hard drive that you plug in and you have access to everything on that hard drive. Um, but this, since it's networked, it's not the same. It's like everything that I have to access on it, I have to access through the web. I don't just have like a direct hard drive plugged in like right now. There's nothing hooked up to this, so I'm accessing all my files, but there's no way for me through, like, USB, uh, USB to, like, plug this thing into here for me just to have access like I would with a normal, uh, drive, so just something weird that I'm getting used to, but I suppose that's what, like, a normal server, like, a larger server would do. Um, I like th that it has these little keys, the key's pretty cool. So you can unlock and pull out each one of these, stick a hard drive in it, stick that thing in there, and boom, daddy, you got another hard drive. It's pretty fancy. So I'm not use, utilizing it to its full capabilities, but uh, I've been told between QNAP and Synology, like these are the best ones. So I kind of want to try a QNAP as well, um, but I don't have any reason to. This thing is dope. It's doing everything that I need to do. So. Um, that's it. That's my coverage on Synology and what's going on. Uh, like I said, I'm going to have some more videos from them coming out, but I'm going to sit down with them and actually figure out like what, what apps do I need to be using and like how do I really use this thing really, really well. Um, pretty soon I'm going to need to be able to house a lot of video that I can stream from through a server. So setting myself up with a server is probably going to be what I'm going to do. Um, but what I'm about to do is going to grow and it's going to be on a massive scale. So I'm probably going to need to use like Amazon or something to have like a cloud uh, streaming service, something with big enough space that can handle enough bandwidth. Um, but that's kind of expensive too. So I know you guys want to know what the hell I'm up to. <laughs> I'm up to some cool shit, man. <laughs> Again, that's just why I'm not making content. It's like I have, I still have just as much shit that I'm doing every day when I get home that is for Journey Master and Electrician U. It's just not making content so i do have more tool reviews coming up the last we're in the last quarter of the uh, thd perspective the home depot um sponsorship for the year uh so i have 
a whole bunch of tools. One of them is a weed eater. Milwaukee has a cordless weed eater. They call it a string trimmer. <laughs> so <laughs> being that it's the middle of winter, I don't know why they're sending me a damn weed eater in the like dead of the winter <laughs> to test out. There's no fucking grass out there. Um, so I think I'm just going to have some like pieces of string set up in my garage and try to trim them because they call it a string trimmer. Um, they have a fucking 16-inch chainsaw. Milwaukee, it's battery powered. You stick a damn battery in it, you got a chainsaw. That's pretty awesome. So that review is coming soon. Um, what else? Some more lights. Um, some screwdrivers. Some Husky stuff. Um, some lights from Husky. Some PVC cutting stuff. Uh, nothing like really super awesome this quarter. Um, there's a Dewalt job site radio that I've gotten to use recently. Um, nowhere near as cool as the rigid one, but uh, still pretty decent. Um, so that's the stuff that I have coming up. What I'm trying to do for Electrician U is come up with some more troubleshooting content right now. It's a little difficult to film. Like if I'm going on a service call, I can't just like pop out all my stuff. And if I'm in a doctor's office and like I'm trying to work there and film myself talking, it's kind of difficult to do that. So uh, I'm having to just do stuff in my garage. That's another thing that I'm going to hopefully be changing relatively soon in the next few months. Hopefully this year, getting the fuck out of my garage and getting a, an actual place established to be able to record all this stuff. Um, but I'm trying to figure out a way to do troubleshooting content. So like how to troubleshoot plugs, how to troubleshoot switches, how to troubleshoot breakers, how to troubleshoot circuits in general, and how to troubleshoot arc fault tripping. Um, knowing the difference between like series arc fault and parallel arc fault tripping and um, so just I, I guess I'm like thinking on things in that nature um, below this video if you guys do give a shit at all would you please leave some comments and uh, let me know of any videos that you want done on electrician you on just the, the how stuff works page um, again journey to master is just more like a podcast it's about stuff and things um, being an electrician doing electrician things um, but it's not like how-to stuff so that's electrician you so at least leave on this post um, any suggestions for content that you guys want to have created um, I'm gonna do a video coming up about the different voltages what the hell it means to like 120 240 208 277 480 like how all of that works how you get the weird math what a four a 240 Delta system is and what you know, having a high leg or a wild leg is, um, so some good content, but, uh, um, I have things that I have to do first, like immediately first right now for the next probably month before I'm really going to start pushing any more content. Um, I just have to, this is like, there's some big things going on. So, um, I just need to focus on that kind of stuff and the, the obligations I already have, the other sponsorships. Um, you'll probably see some stuff coming out from me from Diablo. Um, Diablo is going a little harder lately with some sponsorship stuff, so I'm probably going to start pushing a lot of their blades. Um, I have a lot of fucking tools in my garage right now, so if any of y'all are in Austin, Texas, or around Austin, Texas, I'm thinking about doing a meetup in the next couple of months. Um... So please leave some comments below if you would go to a meetup, if you think that that would be awesome if you're in the area or like kind of anywhere near me and you want to do a meetup because I think I'm just going to give all of the damn tools away that I have. I have so many. Like I have full sets of dope tools and then I have extra sets of them. You know, like I probably have like 39 Milwaukee batteries right now, like 18 volt lithium ion, still brand new in packages with chargers. I've got extra drills and impact driver. Dude, I just got so much shit it's sitting in my garage, and I'm never going to use half of it. So um, probably going to do a meetup and just set y'all up with some free shit, some some tools. Um, so let me know if you guys would go to that, and uh, I will try to organize that. I started another group. Journey to Master has a group now. Um, Electrical Wizardry on Facebook. This is all on Facebook, sorry. Uh, Electrical Wizardry, if you guys aren't a part of that, that's a Facebook group I started a while ago. I think there's like, I don't know, 15, 1,600 people, 2,000 people, some shit, I don't know. Um, but it's a very kind of like select group, um, very humble people, very respectful people. Um, everything there you, is preceded with respect. So 
Um, if you're a dickhead and you just like to rip people apart, you're going to get kicked out. Um, I'm just trying to keep it like a good group of guys that give a fuck about each other, really. Um, so I started that group, but then I, like, I don't advertise my stuff. I don't talk about electrician you stuff. I don't bring any of that there. It's not for that. So uh, I started a new group called Journey to Master. And that is more stuff that is just like pertaining to my content. And it's become really difficult for me to keep up with the comments and the emails and the messages on Facebook and all the group uh, messages. And then, you know, Instagram has the messenger and like comments and messages. And dude, it's just so hard for me to keep up. Like at this point, I think Electrician U has like 31,000 followers now and Journey of Masters got around 20,000. Um, my groups each have like, I don't know, like, 1500 a piece um, Instagram both my Instagram accounts have like 1500 a piece so it's just there's just so many people that I can't keep up and I feel like a dick when I'm looking through my posts because I've taken a week off and there's like 58 on every single one of them and I'm like fuck some of these are a month to six weeks old some of them I just can't reply to so I can't keep up anymore so the whole point of the journey to master group and I'm going to create one for electrical wizardry or a uh, electrician you as well is that a lot of the same questions are answered or asked to me a lot it's like uh do you really think i am not too old i'm 40 years old and i want to become an electrician is that too young you know like that's an easy question that's answerable so in this group i want to have a lot of like topics and things that are touched on that people can just go through and be like oh there's the answer already he's already answered that like 73 times um, plus it'll help y'all have a place to kind of come together and talk about the stuff that I would normally answer but I just can't keep up with the volume so those of you that are like long time listeners and followers my dudes appreciate it um, but it'll give a place for like people to kind of help me answer questions and things um rather than me just do like a half-ass piss poor job of it sorry sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry um so yeah go join that group um and please please if you are studying for your exams if you want to study some code knowledge buy that book it's pretty badass i put a lot of time into it um, and it's cheap, dude. Where else are you going to find a hundred question practice exam for eight ninety nine? like a digital download and a PDF that you can download to your phone or download to your laptop. Um, there's even a little thing at the beginning of it that talks about like how the code book is laid out and what things mean. What is the difference between an article and a section and a subsection? And what does the little like italic N with a gray background mean inside of there? And like, you know, what, what, is the overall like eagle's eye view of the code book and how to study it so um, let me know what you guys think if you bought the book if you think it's dope if you think it sucks either way leave some comments below get at me i love you crazy people thank you so much for your your uh, continued support even through my inconsistencies which happen to be bounding in the last six months um, four months probably um, trying to get everything streamlined but it's things are going to get a lot bigger and a lot crazier to come. Um, so I'm just trying to figure all that out right now. So I'm taking a little bit of time to to play chess with myself. <laughs> but again, love you guys. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next episode.